Hi, I'm Jerry Nixon, and this is SQL Tips for Developers, a beginner's guide. And I'm part of the developer experience on the SQL team, and I'm here with a colleague, Anaga. She and I were both on the same team. Anaga, thanks for being here with me. Let's pretend you're a beginner. Where would you start? Hi, Jerry. How about what is SQL Server? How about what is SQL Server? You can't get more basic than that. I think it's the best place to start. So let's talk about it. Let's say you have SQL Server and, and you just downloaded it from the Microsoft website. You want to get started. What are you about to install? You're about to install software that manages databases. Now, I want to be really clear that the database is what holds all of your information and data, not SQL Server. SQL Server is a manager of the database. Now, it's a little play on words because I know the database itself is part of SQL Server, but SQL Server itself is the container for databases. Now, where can you install it? You can install it on your local developer machine. You can install it on a server that's on your network, a virtual machine, maybe one that's in a cloud, or you can even run it as a container. That's one of the easiest ways to get started, by the way, because a container can execute and run inside a completely isolated environment. And that sandbox can, can mean you don't even have to install SQL Server. It's a great option, by the way, not only for development, not only for production, but also in your DevOps CI CD pipeline where you can deploy and test your database along the way. Pretty cool. It's also worth knowing there are a couple editions. Uh, there's the the free express edition. There's the standard edition that has the normal basket of features. There's the enterprise edition that has all of the features, including the high availability features that allow you to do things like clustering. And then there's the developer edition that's made for you and for me to get started. We install the developer edition of SQL Server. It has all the features. We don't have to think about what version we're running on. We build our application with the features we need and then back into the version from there. Pretty neat. Okay, so as I said, SQL Server is a container of databases, and I can have one or more database, and this is where all of your information is stored inside tables. The database itself has all kinds of capabilities as well, but SQL Server is a container of databases, and when you create a database, presto, now you have a place to interact with all your data. Now, if you're installing SQL Server and you're not on the cloud, then you get with SQL Server not only your database that you just created, but some system databases that help make SQL Server work. So one of those is the master database. If you have multiple databases out there, the master database knows all of them. It's sort of like a meta database that understands what's going on inside SQL Server. There's also the model database that's kind of like a template when you say that you want a brand new blank database. There's the MSDB database. It's kind of a maintenance database inside SQL Server that makes sure things, especially timed things and agents are running. And then finally, there's the TempDB database. And it's a working, almost like a scratch pad for SQL Server that allows it to do the queries that you're asking it to do. It needs to do it somewhere. So that's what TempDB is about. That's SQL Server. SQL Server is an application that inside it can host databases that inside those databases then are all of your data. The capability to handle the server itself and interact with the operating system and so forth is part of SQL Server. The ability to interact with the data, that's the SQL database. Pretty cool. Anaga, I'm glad you had me start here because this really is the beginning. And if you're a developer ready to get started, start here. HTTP, AKA MS, slash SQL, where you can download it. And if you're not interested in downloading it, you can always run it in a container. And if you're not interested in that, go to the Azure portal where you can run your own Azure SQL DB and get started today. Good luck.